So Solana is a faster, cheaper blockchain, maybe less decentralized, but certainly less less deep and broad in the number of developers working on it, number of applications, but it's rising up fast. There's another type of blockchain that's coming up in the in the background, which is the Move protocol, which came out of Facebook, DM. And there's a, um, a blockchain like Sui UI, which is another very fast, very cheap, but very innovative blockchains. Solana will outperform all cycle. And it's as simple as that. Why has Solana been a better performing asset over time than ETH or Bitcoin? It's because it's newer. Raul Pal, the founder and CEO of Real Vision, has the craziest price predictions for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and the entire cryptocurrency industry for the 2024 and 2025 bull market. As we go deeper into the bull market, which many have predicted could be the grandest crypto bull market ever, the former Goldman Sachs executive has shared an interesting analysis of the deep correlation between crypto, tech, and macro. Pal predicts that the 2024 and 2025 bull market will be an exceedingly special one because it is both crypto and macro summer. With the confluence of various bullish factors, the Real Vision CEO expects a significant rise in crypto asset prices, with Bitcoin going as high as over $200,000 per coin in May and up to a million dollars per coin before the end of the bull market. Pal's prediction for Ethereum, Solana, and other promising layer one tokens is even more bullish. Last July, Pal predicted Solana could climb by as much as 47x from the previous cycle's lows. In his most bullish scenario, Pal sees the fifth largest crypto asset by market cap hitting a peak of $1,000 before the cycle ends. That's a 455.56% increase from Solana's current price of $180, which in itself is a 785% increase from a year ago. Pal recently had an interview with Wealthian, hosted by Skybridge Capital founder Anthony Scaramucci. During the discussion, the renowned macro analyst gives his outlook on the crypto bull market, the coming Bitcoin halving, and shares some promising layer one tokens outside Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana that can fetch investors a lot of gains before the cycle ends. As we bring you clips from the highly insightful conversation, please take a little time to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks, and enjoy the video. This video is sponsored by Cryptonomy, a fully regulated high security financial services firm focused on the overall digital asset space. With Cryptonomy, you can buy, sell, and swap crypto assets in seconds. Enjoy instant loans without selling your crypto assets. Earn up to 180% APY on staked assets. Access the Cryptonomy Crypto Card, which allows you to grow your assets every time you spend. Using Cryptonomy these past months has allowed me to do so much more with my crypto investments. For example, the platform's flexible and fixed interest accounts allow you to earn amazing rewards on staked crypto assets. Here is a small demonstration. Using my personal Cryptonomy account, I will be staking about $2,000 using both the flexible and fixed interest accounts. As the name suggests, the flexible account offers more flexible terms for depositors, but fewer returns than the fixed interest accounts. To stake some Bitcoin in the flexible account, click on interest account deposit and select your available crypto for conversion. I have USDT, so let's search for USDT. Then, you input the amount of USDT you wish to deposit and click on Continue. As you can see, I'll earn 30.72% APR with this plan. Now, if I switch to the fixed interest account, I can get far juicier offers. This time, let's stake some Solana, which currently offers 172.5% APY. I click on Deposit again, search for USDT, input another 1000 USDT, the amount I wish to stake, and select the staking period. I want to stake it for 12 months. Then click continue. On the next page, you'll be shown the deposit amount, interest rate, period, expiration date, and how much you're scheduled to earn. Read and agree to the terms and click create. And you're in. It's all so convenient and easy. This is an exciting project, and I hope you check it out and learn more about it. 
please click the links in the description box below to learn more about cryptonomy. Thanks for watching. We are in the crypto macro spring to summer transition. That is when liquidity starts coming into the system. It happens to co correspond with the US election cycle because obviously politicians can't help but give out candy around election time. Yes, of course. It's also the Bitcoin halving time. So Bitcoin halving um, reduces the supply. And then there was the ETF. So basically, we've got a perfect setup of liquidity plus new demand plus yes. reduced supply. And so the rest of the year should play out the same way. I mean, I continue to be very bullish this year and very bullish for most of next year. Because Bitcoin is basically a share of a network, the more people who join the network, the more value goes up. So as the ETF brings people in, as people start fearing the governments and their deficits, they start looking for different solutions. One of the reasons gold has been rallying is the same. So what we're seeing is this was the most successful launch of any ETF in all history, which tells you it's not just an, an ETF. It's that the idea of Bitcoin itself is resonating with people. They kind of know they're getting screwed somewhere by the system. And this feels like a way of getting higher returns with more volatility, but it kind of saves them from what is going on. So let's assume that this is the largest ETF launch in history and a lot of newbies have come in. Well, it's happening at a magic time. The magic time is what's known as the Bitcoin halving. So new Bitcoin comes onto the market via miners, Bitcoin miners who undergo huge kind of mathematical calculations to produce a Bitcoin. There is a fixed number of Bitcoins that can be produced each year. So it's a competition to produce them. So you need a lot of computing power. And then every four years, the algorithm of Bitcoin itself halves the number. So if there were 100 Bitcoin being produced by miners every day, whatever the number is, um, right now, after April 20th, it goes to 50. So there's more people coming into the market, which is new demand, and new supply is shrinking. So all the time, the only supply is really sellers of Bitcoin who hold Bitcoin right now. But Bitcoin is one of these weird assets where 80% of all holders just hoard it, like you and I. We just don't do anything with it. We just hold it. And so there's really only 20% that's available for trading. That mechanism is driving the valuation up of Bitcoin over time. Now, it also means that people start to see this asset going up because there's less supply and lots of demand, and it joins more and more people. Because this asset is the best performing asset in all recorded human history. Bitcoin itself has done 20 million percent since 2012. It has produced 150% annualized returns since 2012. Ethereum has done, which is another cryptocurrency, about 170% and Solana 190% or 200%. So this asset is by far and away the greatest performing asset in all of humanity. And that gets people's attention, obviously, when people's returns have been low and people can't get out of the wealth trap. One important factor Pal believes will continue to drive Bitcoin and crypto prices higher is the perpetual debasement of fiat currencies by central banks. According to Pal, the US Federal Reserve and other central banks sealed the fate of all fiat currencies when they started printing recklessly in 2008 to save the banking sector and real estate industry. However, they only managed to delay the inevitable. With a final crisis still ahead and drawing closer, PAL believes investors will always run towards safe haven assets like gold and Bitcoin. In addition, Bitcoin and crypto present everyday investors with a rare opportunity they can hardly find with other asset classes. The opportunity to not just maintain your wealth, but also grow it exponentially when you make the right bets and avoid getting too greedy by using leverage. During the interview, the former Goldman Sachs executive also shares some promising layer one tokens he's investing in and how you should allocate capital to main crypto assets and your degen bags. Here are more clips from the interview. Think of 
a blockchain, a layer one blockchain, like the Bitcoin is a blockchain, but it's not used for much yet. They're building applications on it now. But there's other ones like Ethereum is basically another layer to the internet that allows the transfer and storage of value, whether it's digital assets or even real world assets. You can have contracts on chain, stuff like this. So that kind of sits on top of the internet. And there's a few variations of this. One is the Ethereum virtual machine, which is Ethereum. The cryptocurrency, Ethereum, is your share and your payment system to use that network. Right, it's just like a mobile phone network. You might use T-Mobile. Okay, great. And you pay your bills to T-Mobile. If you want to use um, Ethereum's network, you pay using Ethereum, which is their native token. Okay, pretty straightforward. But there's a couple of competing ones that are big. The main competing one is Solana. So Solana is a faster, cheaper blockchain, maybe less decentralized, but certainly less, less deep and broad in the number of developers working on it, number of applications, but it's rising up fast. So that is another system. So you might find another 5G provider that's not T-Mobile, and you might want to use them instead. And maybe they've got different benefits. Then on top of that, there's another type of blockchain that's coming up in the in the background, which is the Move protocol, which came out of Facebook, DM. And there's a, um, a blockchain like SUI, UI, which is another very fast, very cheap, but very innovative blockchains. So they all kind of allow different mechanisms what's used they're like different computer systems where some have different benefits over others so there's about four or five of these that are gaining traction sui's earlier stage so that might be put with some of the other early ones out there but solana and ethereum are the kind of big daddies of this space that have been growing there's lots of activity and being used so what's going to happen to solana solana will outperform all cycle and it's as simple as that. Why has Solana been a better performing asset over time than ETH or Bitcoin? It's because it's newer. When networks are new, if it goes from two people to four people on the network, that's a doubling of the network with only two people. Right. right. When you go from 50 million and add two people, it's not as much, it was no growth, right? Right. So right. early stage networks, when they start getting adoption, go up a lot in price. Because don't forget, your token price goes up, the more people use the network. It's as simple as that. So it's earlier stage. And so it's likely to go up if it follows the same kind of paths of adoption that Bitcoin and Ethereum got as well. So it's been outperforming all cycle and it should continue to outperform this cycle. There'll be other better performing ones because they'll be even earlier stage. Right. But of a big safer bet, you know, where you where you feel comfortable with your money, where nothing's going to go horribly wrong apart from the price goes up and down, is going to be Solana. If you want to make some money in an understandable, consistent way, you have Bitcoin. It goes up around 150% a year, even taking into account the bear markets over time. Right, That is the best performing asset you've ever had in your portfolio. So you should be delighted. Meme coins and dog coins... All of this stuff is use cases of cryptocurrencies on Ethereum or Solana or wherever. And that is just culture. That's the fun of the internet playing out. And it's a wild, speculative, gambling place. That is not the place for your capital. But we all enjoy having fun too. So as long as at least 90% of your assets are in something like Bitcoin, Ethereum or Solana, Feel free to play around with the other stuff. Get involved in the culture, but don't expect to make money because you won't. That's the land of everything sounds like it's going to go up 100x, and some do, but most things go to zero. I mean, it's bizarre, however, Dogecoin has managed to last the test of time. Dogecoin Amazing. is up 40,000% since inception and yeah. has outperformed Bitcoin, and it looks like it's going to outperform Ethereum. I don't understand it, but that is the culture of the internet in a token. In other news, JP Morgan predicts the US Securities and Exchange Commission will eventually approve spot Ethereum ETFs. 
However, the banking giant says it will take a litigation process to force the regulator to change its approach. Without that, Nikolaos Panigurtsoglu, managing director and global market strategist at JP Morgan, maintains that there is only a 50% chance of the agency approving ETH ETFs by the May 23rd deadline. If there is no spot Ethereum ETF approval in May, then we assume there is going to be a litigation process after May, Nikolao said in an interview with The Block this week. He added that the SEC would eventually lose the litigation, as it did with the Grayscale and Ripple court cases in 2023, and eventually be forced to approve spot Ethereum ETFs. Nikolaus's 50% chance of approval in May is double the 25% chance of approval given by the Bloomberg ETF analysts. Despite the SEC soliciting comments on proposed rule changes for three-spot Ethereum ETF applications from Bitwise, Grayscale, and Fidelity, Eric Balchunas and James Seifert still say there is a very slim chance that the applications get approved next month. In a post on social media platform X, the senior Bloomberg ETF analyst noted that the SEC is not engaging the spot Ethereum ETF applications as it did with the Bitcoin ETF applications last year. The post reads, The lack of engagement seems to be purposeful versus procrastination. No positive signs slash intel anywhere you look. Personally, I hope they do approve it, but it just ain't looking good. We're weeks away from the SEC's deadline and experts are getting less and less optimistic about the applications getting approved in May. However, Ethereum investors are still very hopeful that the approvals will be announced in May. What are your thoughts on the conflicting opinions? Do you believe the SEC will be forced to approve spot Ethereum ETFs later this year? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.